Jimmy Madigan is my name. We have a, a very good farm here. It is reasonably dry and very good grassland and some good, very good arable land as well. It's primarily a beef farm. We finish roughly 150 cattle per year. All stock that's produced on farm is finished on farm. Our grassland management is based on a very long grazing season. We have paddocks roughly between two and five acres, mostly three and four. We aim to graze in three days and rest for three weeks. Our forage is cut on farm in a two-cut silage system. We don't cut the same land every year. We rotate our silage ground because we find it's better for the land. In heavy rainfall, we move our animals more often. It's maybe instead of a three-day rotation, we move them every two days and leave grass behind. We have an advantage here with the two separate herds. We can wean calves or wean cows at different times of the year. When we're se selecting grass seed mixtures, we aim for good gra grass cover for good cuts, cuts of silage. We aim for a long grazing season, grass that grows well in the shoulder periods of the year. I was in contact with the team from Germany and we came up with a mixture and we went with it last year for the first time. The plan for the future would be to incorporate it in all our receding seed programme over, over the next number of years. So we're seeing huge interest from farmers in both red and white clover in recent years and I suppose a lot of that is coming from increased prices of fertiliser nitrogen. Farmers are looking at means to reduce the fertiliser bill but also to continue to grow high quality and a reasonable quantity of grass um, in an environmentally sustainable way. And clover's ticking a lot of boxes in this regard. But over the last number of years, Germany have been investing heavily in terms of their R&D and in terms of the breeding pr programme for our red clovers. And we've developed red clovers such as Albert Claret, which we're looking at here today, which has the potential to, to last for four years or even a little bit longer out on farm. Animals perform really well on clover, so where we have animals grazing grass clover swords, we do see a benefit in terms of animal performance, be that with dairy cows, beef or sheep as well. I feel clover swords is the way forward on this farm because we're getting better animal performance. is equal yields on our silage ground with um, no applications of nitrogen and our animals are doing better. Plus we're able to produce a high protein crop which reduces the need for expensive imported protein. Business-wise, our farm is being run more efficiently. We're not spending as much money on bagged nitrogen. We've been working on our, our lime levels, our pH levels, our P's and K levels over the years. 95% of the farm is indexed 3 and 4 for P's and K's. So we need to balance that. Our fertiliser application on the clover sward uh, this year is two bags of 10, 10, 20 in March. And, and sometime along the year then it gets, it'll get 2,000 gallons of slurry. That's it. Irish farmers are looking to see what they can do in terms of you know, reducing their environmental footprint while still maintaining a sustainable farm into the future. And we have a lot of farmers like Jimmy here grazing red and white clover swords and allowing them to reduce their nitrogen input and usage on the farm. And that's climate smart, that's ensuring they're going to be sustainable into the future. It's sustainable from an, uh, uh, an economic perspective because we're reducing the inputs on the farm, but it's also sustainable from an environmental perspective. And farmers are definitely moving away from that monoculture of perennial ryegrass they're trying to incorporate clover and they're trying to do their bit for the environment. We need to be climate smart going forward. Um, the climate is in trouble worldwide and we need to do our bit. And if I can grow grass, plenty of high quality forage and grass at lower cost in my, my, my pocket going forward is definitely the way to go on this farm.